Hey everybody, it's Christine Garvin and welcome to Hormonally Speaking. I am here today with a friend and colleague who I'm really excited to talk to because we're going to talk about something that is important for everyone, no matter what, and that's money. And I'm very interested in the intersection of how money ultimately impacts your hormone health. And a lot of that to me comes through the stress that people feel about money and how this impacts our adrenals and our nervous system. So I brought on this expert because she's going to talk to us about the connections there and how you can kind of work with that in a different way since it is such a deep um, need for every, every person out there and can affect us so much. So for creative and holistic entrepreneurs, Jen Ailey is a bridge to the world of finance and business. She started her first of seven businesses 15 years ago, has learned a lot the hard way, has filed bankruptcy, and has more than tripled her income within three years. In 2013, she bootstrapped on an Asheville, North Carolina-based handmade jewelry business and grew it successfully. As a coach and facilitator, Jen empowers creative and holistic entrepreneurs in money and business. A coach since 2003, she is a certified coach through both Martha Beck and Best Year Yet. Her TEDx talk, Harness Creativity as Your Greatest Business Asset, was among the 10% of TEDx talks to be chosen for TED.com. Welcome, Jen. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Ah, so excited to have you here. I mean, you know, it's great because we, I mean, we talk a lot, you know, in, in our walks and we talk a lot in our coaching together. Um, but this area is something that, um, I feel like women don't talk about enough. And when you're looking at hormone health, it's so important to understand, um, the underlying stresses in your life and the major ones. And money is a huge friggin' stress for everyone, right? I mean, almost everyone, let's put it that way. Um, <laughs> particularly at this time in our world, I would say. So I'm so curious because you've gone through, as I just read in your bio, you've gone through like the extremes, right? So I'm sure that you've experienced a lot of stress around money. <laughs> so tell us kind of how you ended up doing this work. Okay, great. Um, so, and I'm excited to learn from you about what I'm talking about with sort of the science part of things too. So this yeah. is so, so fun. <laughs> We're bringing it together. Yes. So, um, yeah, so I started businesses in the Bay Area in San Francisco, um, you know, early, early, mid two thousands. And I didn't know what I was doing at all. Mm -hmm. I was a life coach. <laughs> I know, I know that too. <laughs> I've been there. I was a professional organizer mm -hmm. and I was just making everything up and, I was really oblivious to the business part, the money part, marketing, sales. I had no clue. And mm -hmm. I had this coaching certification and I had these skills in organizing and I had, I did some professional development, but I was like totally clueless. Mm -hmm. So um, I didn't really pay attention to my numbers um, and I went into significant debt. Mm -hmm. um, and I would, you know, I would do my bookkeeping for the previous year the following March, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, or have somebody else do it for me usually mm -hmm. actually. So I was just totally like, ah, you know, and I, you know, and in my TED talk, I talk about how when I was a kid, I didn't, I wasn't good at math, you know, that whole story. Yeah. Um, and in high school, I had a tutor to help me catch up with stuff and I was okay. And I got through college and everything, but I wasn't like, I never, I was an English major with art and history minors. Right. I'm a totally, a totally right brain all the yeah, way. Creative. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, and I just didn't identify with those things. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, okay, finance and business are just not me. And I, it's just not me. And so mm -hmm. I just, you know, I never stretched into that. In the meantime, I was doing tons of personal growth, like tons of healing work in the Bay Area, of course, like the Mecca for all that stuff. And um, and then, uh, you know, eventually I quit teaching because I, I'm sorry, I quit, uh, I quit doing my business in 2008 when the economy crashed and uh, my debt was just like sitting on top mm -hmm. of me. And it, it was like, it was, it was spiraling and everything was coming to a head and it was just not pretty. So I quit, I quit my, using my credit cards because I couldn't use them anymore. Mm -hmm. I quit my um, businesses more, more or less. I coached a little bit after that. And then I um, got a job teaching in San Francisco at Art Academy. 
at Academy mm. University. And then mm -hmm. I moved to Hawaii a few months later. And then I started again education more there and started teaching again because that was my previous life and my master's degree. So I started teaching again. I've taught for years. And then I burned out on teaching English mm. college in Maui. And then I started a hobby of making jewelry. Mm. And it was so good for me. It was just so nourishing to be working with my hands and have this like creative process and like get in touch with my creativity again and just have tons of ideas. Um, and just, it was such a transformational process. And then, so then it, it kind of became a business because I kept on, people kept on buying stuff from me and I fell into a show and I was like, wow, like selling like flow. <laughs> yeah, selling yeah. jewelry is like so much cooler than trying to sell these services because people just walk up and be like, I want that necklace. So my first show, this woman walked up and bought one of the most expensive things I had, which I think was like $50 at the mm -hmm. time. Um, and, and I was just like, oh my God, like, this is so cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to explain to her about it. I don't have to like, you know, whatever. It's just like, boom. So uh, that started like about eight years ago and uh, I built that business and I, and I did it differently than before. I had no debt at all mm -hmm. for the business. I kept my overhead low. Mm -hmm. So I had a used car with no payment. Like I was just like, okay, how can I leverage everything I can here to make this work, to put everything I have back into the business? And I just kept it simple. I learned a turn. I also had had previous training about business before for holistic practitioners that, mm -hmm. that I can actually can comprehend. Um, and, and so I just did it totally differently and, um, and it worked. Mm -hmm. And I also wasn't coming from my ego and my head. I was more coming from my heart and my soul and being called to this purpose of the jewelry mm -hmm. business. Um, and, and then I kept on being around all these artists and I kept on hearing like complaints and frustrations around money and, and it was hard. I mean, it was hard doing shows and like managing cash flow, and it was hard to build the business, you know, mm -hmm. and it was, it was hard for everybody. Yeah. And so it's like, when you don't know what you're doing, it's even harder and you don't have any support. So I started coaching um mm. offering that and teaching workshops and talking about money the elephant in the room always mm -hmm. and not from a like starving artist perspective but like okay let's look at this like what you know what is business what is marketing yeah. what is sales like what what is money money is a tool you know money is your your um way to to express yourself in the world it's a way to create freedom um and so just reframing all those components of of business and being able to really get creative with how I perceive business and, and seeing business as a creative process of like creating something. Mm -hmm. And in that money is a relationship as a part of that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a constant learning process. Yeah. Well, as you were talking, I was thinking a little bit about my own experiences and thinking about maybe people out there that have uh, been through the same thing or maybe going through the same thing now, you know, I, you know, was a dancer for a lot of years and I really put those numbers to the side too, right? It was more about, okay, am I bringing in enough to just kind of like take care of the basics, you know? And I don't know if I've said this on this podcast before, but I really, I don't know if word is the good word is credit, but credit having this massive fibroid grow because I wasn't looking at my money and really dealing with my money. You know, I just was always the same thing. I would wait till the last minute to do my taxes and pull everything together because I just I was scared and I didn't want to look at it. And just the energy for me now of working with my, you know, I don't do it every week, even though I tell myself I'll do it every week, but much more consistently, I look at both my business money and my personal money and just even the energy I feel like of doing that, that's like 80% of it, right? That's huge. <laughs> yeah. This is the metaphor I use for that. Cause that's really common. And mm -hmm. that, that's what I was doing. I was just like oblivious and like not looking at it, you know, um, and now I'm obsessed with it. So I have to stop doing it so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so, so this is the metaphor I use for people who, if, 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 so those of you who are listening, who have this tendency to avoid your numbers, mm -hmm. this is the metaphor that may help you evolve that if you want to. Mm -hmm. 
And it's that, you know, imagine that your, your business or your life, whatever it is, you're, you're, you have a ship mm-hmm. on the ocean and, you know, you want to get somewhere. Mm-hmm. If you don't want to get anywhere, it kind of doesn't matter. But if you mm-hmm. want to go somewhere and you want to do something and you want to like not do more than just stay afloat, then you need to know what resources you have so that you can plan for it. Mm-hmm. So you need to go down and you need to look at your gauges and say, okay, how much, you know, depending on the kind of boat, mm-hmm. <laughs> how much pool do I have? What the wind's going to do? Are my sails like, you know, in tip top shape? Mm-hmm. Uh, is my crew in shape? Right. And, and what's the weather going to be? And are there any leaks? You have to go down and see if there are any leaks too. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. If you have a leak or you don't have enough fuel or the weather or the sails, like all these factors are so huge. And if you don't actually know what is going on, you can only get so far mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and you can only get so far. And then you might sink before you even get to the destination. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Know? Right. And so it really is about, okay, where am I? It's like that. Where am I on the map? Because you can't direct yourself to go somewhere until you know where you are. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that part of that in business and in life is how much money do I have? How much interest am I paying? You know, what do I need? How can I get it? What do I need to get it? What kind of support do I need to get it? Like all these kinds of questions. And and this kind of, because the avoidance is also scarcity. Mm-hmm. And this kind of, this kind of clarity creates a kind of freedom. Mm-hmm. And it creates prosperity because it, because you're, you're seeing what you can do with what you have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you have enough, you're coming from enough, mm-hmm. like no matter what you see on your numbers, it's enough. Mm-hmm. And the question of like, you know, if I had what I needed right now, where would it be? Or, you know, the affirmation of I have what I need, how can I access it? Mm-hmm. Those kinds of mindset shifts are massive. And mm-hmm. I'll tell you when I've been in like, if, even something simple, it can be major, it can be simple, but like, if I, if I affirm that I'll find what I need mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in weird ways sometimes. Yeah. You know? And that might yeah. mean asking for help. Yeah. You know, it might mean, you know, organizing to find something you didn't know you had or whatever like mm-hmm. energy, mm-hmm. Um, but it's a massive shift. Yeah. It's totally worth it. Well, and I think that's an interesting, you know, take on it too, because I was also thinking about, you know, this is, this is me and what I've kind of had the, um, where my head has been at for a lot of years. And I do feel like I know other creatives that are the same where we're like, okay, this system, right? This capitalist system is going to break. It's going to fall apart. Why should I even like keep up with anything now? Because it's all going to fall apart. Right. And I mean, I, I was in that space for a solid, you know, 10 years, 15 years. And that's when everything was just going you know, South, because I just wanted to be in denial, I guess, of my present state, because I'm like, well, I see this future thing. I just know intuitively or whatever, that it's not, it's all going to, you know, fall apart. And do you see this with with people too? I have some of that too. Yeah. I bother planning for my retirement and how many every year is when this and blah, 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 you know? Um, And I don't know that I actually want to retire that way personally. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but yeah, that's it. And, you know, and I've heard friends, like, I think it was last year. I had friends who had heard this prediction of like last year, this time was going to be, and this year I've heard the same thing mm-hmm. you know? and it might, mm-hmm. but there's going to be something. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's not going to be us like, you know, only bartering probably. Right. right. Money's not going to just be gone. So it might change, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but you still have a relationship with the in and outflow, the currency mm, of your mm-hmm, life, mm-hmm. whether it's actually money, tangible or electronic or whatever it is, mm-hmm, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so, so there's still going to be a currency right. of things coming in and out of your life. And you get to direct that flow and allow the coming in and the going out and the mm-hmm. receiving. And, you know, you know, there's a, there's one of my favorite things about the money idea, money, money, uh, issues is 
there's a book called money's not the problem you are mm -hmm. and one of my favorite quotes from that book is that you know it's not you don't have a money problem you have a receiving problem mm -hmm. and so that idea i love because the nervous system mm -hmm. has to be in a calm state for me to be able to receive energetically. Mm -hmm. If I'm doing, I'm chasing, I'm running, I'm pushing, it's like, it doesn't work. And that's mm -hmm. how I got into my health issues. You know, mm -hmm. I had some major, um, I had some major hip stuff and some major digestive stuff. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it has been really, really a big deal and impact my life. And it's mm -hmm. because it was, I was still coming to a certain degree from the pushing doing mode, mm -hmm, you know, some mm -hmm. people call the masculine show in a way, mm -hmm, so instead mm -hmm. of the feminine. And, and, you know, it's funny because you can create from that, mm -hmm. but it's not sustainable. It's definitely not sustainable. It's not yeah. sustainable. Yeah. So it's like, okay, you know, yep. like, um, I, I want to put a nice big, like marker around that for the, the women listening, you know, because we have been brought up in a world that is, you know, that masculine push, masculine focus. We've been told, you know, to hustle, especially the last, wait, maybe five or six years, that's become such a thing, right? Like get your side hustle going, get this, do that, you know, be a mom, you know, take care of your, your partner, take care of your multiple businesses and take care of your body and have the, I mean, it's just not sustainable. Right. And there's not that receiving that's happening, um, allowing for that receiving that calming down, um, of the nervous system at all. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I see it left and right. And so, you know, what do you see happening really with that kind of long-term stress impact and that long-term, um, you know, vibe that's happening with your yeah. nervous system? So I'll speak from my experience. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it, it was just like these things that seem like not a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, but just like, oh, people have them like, okay, insomnia, mm -hmm. you know, different, different kinds of insomnia, mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, exhaustion, mm -hmm. um, it, it, inflammation, mm -hmm. and I, I'm not sure where my fingers are, <laughs> <laughs> inflammation, um, pain, mm -hmm. chronic pain, mm -hmm. um, tension in my body mm. so much tension mm -hmm. um like i could go on with all yeah. the stuff that my body has experienced and it's because i was pushing myself mm -hmm. and i was coming from that place and when i'm learning and COVID has been a huge blessing for me in this way because mm -hmm. i just had to stop everything slow down and you know I hired Christine to help me with my digestive stuff. Mm -hmm. So I had an intense protocol. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, and I resisted like crazy at the beginning. It's like, I can't eat potato chips. Are you kidding me? <laughs> um, and, and, you know, like, and my inner child just goes flailing every time I have to do something different because it's like, oh my God, it just brings up the pain body of like mm -hmm. all this stuff I've experienced. Mm -hmm. And so, so for me, it's like, okay, how do I do things differently? How do I allow things to happen and unfold? Mm -hmm. And I'm learning all these really great body work and, and body somatic kinds of things and Liz Koch and all kinds of like stuff where it's like, you, you, you don't have to do something. You're, you're kind of undoing something actually mm -hmm. to help the body mm -hmm. relax. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna do it on its own. There's mm -hmm. nothing you have to do. Right. And so it's this total mind blowing paradigm shift for for non-doing mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and tell my ego that when it comes to like marketing <laughs> a, a coaching program right right, right. And i'm in a launch process right now where i'm, I'm getting ready to launch a program next month mm -hmm. and uh my new and i just look in a new program I'm, i've leveled my program before it's a money mastery intensive so it's been this total creative process and creating mm -hmm. and total like um patience because it's all taking longer than I thought mm -hmm. and I have to keep surrendering to the process mm -hmm. mm. it's the hardest thing for that part of me that just wants to go 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 mm -hmm. you know? and that's um, like deep in you right because that's how your system has been wired after years and years of doing it 
Exactly. So yeah. I'm constantly unlearning that and constantly hitting that wall of like, okay, I'm pushing. Okay, stop. Mm-hmm. You know, go get in my body, take a break. And that is that, that right there mm-hmm. is so radical for me. Yeah. Because I could, I used to be able to just work, 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 work. And I, and I loved it. Like, mm-hmm. I love creating content. I love creating graphics. I love, mm-hmm. you know, teaching all these things. Um, and so it's, it's like, I'm having to constantly remember to, to calm my system down, mm-hmm. to get back in my body, to breathe and to slow down mm-hmm. and i've sort of creating art is a part mm-hmm. of that too during covid mm-hmm. i started creating painting i haven't painted in 15 years so mm-hmm. painting again, and i painted messages to myself yeah <laughs> like let it all go slow oh, the down <laughs> you know like and I, they're hanging in my house because yeah. I'm like, i still need these messages yeah, absolutely. Well, it's interesting because there was an episode, um, if people haven't listened to it, go back and listen to it with Dr. Marisa. And she talked about her own experience of being addicted to stress, right? Absolutely. And, and then we really do get addicted to the adrenaline, you know, going through us th- to the cortisol. And because we feel, we can feel high when we're going and going and going all the time. And a lot of times I would say when we're in our twenties and even in our thirties, to a certain extent, especially the first half, we can do that without obvious repercussions, right? There's things going on under the surface, but it's not obvious. And then suddenly you hit late thirties, early forties, and all of a sudden you're like, I can't do it anymore. And you have to unwind from that addiction really. Um, And, and that's why you keep having to like, you know, pull, I don't want to say pull yourself, but like get to that point and just be like, okay, I got to pull back. And, and I, you know, this is so important. I want everybody to understand, because I talk to my clients all the time about working on, um, you know, using self-care to, to get out of that stress state. But, you know, I think a lot of people think, oh, self-care is going to get a massage and, you know, doing acupuncture and not that those things aren't, but that's not the the grittiness, you know, that's not the real, what you're talking about is actual self-care, right? Yeah. It's noticing in the moment that you're getting caught up in that vicious cycle and pulling yourself out of it and doing yeah. something different. Yeah. It's like the self-parenting in a whole new way. Mm-hmm. Instead of saying, go, go, go. You can do it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like, you know, when I was a kid, I was like in like three basketball leagues and mm-hmm. cheerleader mm-hmm. and baton, ballet, tap. I did everything all the time. So mm-hmm. I was like always going, you mm-hmm. know, as a kid. Mm-hmm. And so, um, and in college, I was like doing a billion things, you know? Mm-hmm. So I've had to like, okay, how do I not identify myself with what I'm doing mm-hmm. and the busyness? Mm-hmm. And how do I come back to my center? How do I calm down? And in Chinese medicine, it's really interesting because um, the gut is associated with the earth element mm. and that self-care too, it's nurturing. Mm-hmm. Um, and something else you just said, um, dang it, that I was going to comment on, but it was like, there's, there's yeah. so many things that just yeah. like tie in in so many ways. And it's like, okay, how do I, how do I just simply calm the F down? Yeah. Right? that's that's what it comes back to you know it's that consistent basically you are setting up new you know um, pathways in your brain you're you're getting out of those old ones and but those grooves are deep and so you keep having to remind yourself you know and and just to bring in a little bit of this sort of hormone aspect of it you know you have your hypothalamus and your pituitary glands in your brain that are overseeing your whole adrenal system and your whole, you know, sex hormones, your ovaries and everything. And so those, that whole system gets off whack when we're stressed all the time. Right. And basically the hypothalamus is telling the pituitary to just go ahead and get that adrenaline and that cortisol going, you know, all the time. So we're really taking down the sex hormones to base level right? And this is why you have to deal with the adrenals before you even really dive into dealing with your estrogen and your progesterone and all those things. Um, And a lot of people just don't understand that, you know? And I'm like, you can't supplement your way out of it. You can't even really eat your way out of it. You know, those are all supports, but you actually have to change the way that you 
move through the world. And sometimes that, that means hard decisions. Like I have a client right now that absolutely despises her job. And I'm like, I get, she's like, just five more years, you know? And I'm like, (laughs) yeah, 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 yeah. And, and I'm like, well, the thing is, it's going to be really hard to heal when eight hours of your day, at least you're doing something that you despise doing for five more years. Right. You know, she she doesn't have the space to to recover from the previous thing. I know what I was going to say is Mm -hmm. the addiction thing. Addiction Mm -hmm. is also associated with the earth element and the gut. Mm -hmm. So in Chinese medicine. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's, and it also just like the food thing, right? Just mm-hmm. like food addiction and like how much we put in our mouth with addiction. And mm, like yes. But, oh, but yes. But it's because we're trying to nurture something. Yep. Absolutely. We're trying to nurture something. So it's like, how do we, how, you know, and, you know, I think about like the years I was going to tons of practitioners, like some emotional release, like all these things that help calm my nervous system and they were amazing. Mm-hmm. And I come out of the session like this and I go on my phone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, yeah. I have, I can't even digest what I just did integrate yeah. it because I'm just like, my life is so busy Yeah, and I, you know, I took, I, and there are times where I like stopped being president of the, and then this was like just four years ago, like mm-hmm. stop being president of this networking event or this group and then stop this and like, okay, mm-hmm. how do I narrow down? Um, but I was in a constant state of fight or flight. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't even see it, you know, Mm -hmm. and my poor practitioners. (laughs) Yeah. They're like, I'm trying so hard with you. They smack me to be like, hello. (laughs) But but it was normal. Like that's the normal. Yeah. So what we're talking about here is so radical. Mm -hmm. It's so radical Mm -hmm. to say, okay, I'm going to take a break. Yeah. I'm going to do my business differently. I'm actually selling my jewelry business right now. It's for sale mm. and have potential buyers because mm-hmm. I'm like, you know what? I only want to do work that I feel like I, I don't want to change my work basically. Mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. a little burnt out. I'm burnt out on that mm-hmm. process and that, that system. And I want to do something different. And I've had these visions of writing books and doing more teaching and all these things. And so now I want to do that thing. Yeah. So I'm like giving myself permission to to both calm down, mm-hmm. trust, take a leap, mm-hmm. and like so many things. Yeah. So that's prosperity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's prosperity. Not settling is prosperity mm-hmm. mindset. Mm-hmm. So Absolutely. the scarcity in our culture is set up to like, excuse me, put us in scarcity because it's like to get, you know, and I have people, I had somebody who wanted to buy my jewelry business who couldn't do it because she needed a job for insurance. Mm. Gotcha. And then it's yeah. like, it's like, okay, like yeah. that's painful to watch. Yeah. But like, that's her choice. And it's like, but the thing is like, for me, I, I haven't had a job in years. Right. Right. And, um, and I pay out the wazoo for medical care or whatever, mm-hmm. but I don't even use much. Mm-hmm. Um, and I get to choose my health now mm-hmm. instead of if I had, if I needed it. Yeah. Yeah. Which and, is and a little I'm lot worse. Saying that's the best choice for everyone. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying that that's, that's a choice mm-hmm. and I get to make it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and it, it is all about like, how can I come from that place? You know, because mm-hmm. when we're, when we have money stress and we're not clear on money, we don't know where it's going to come from. Um, we don't know, we don't have savings. Mm-hmm. Like, that's huge Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because because like you know like i think there's a large percentage of the american population that couldn't deal with a 400 hundred dollar emergency yeah 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 Mm -hmm. i mean that that happens all the time yeah and it's probably worse now it's probably a a lower number now you know because of covid yeah yeah Yeah. so it's like okay saving money is massive and Mm -hmm. saving money even if it's a, I, I used to, I knew this from millionaire mind training, like mm-hmm. million, million years ago, I did. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when you, when you save any money, you are telling your unconscious mind, there's more than enough. Mm-hmm. Even if so it's $10. You're calming mm-hmm. your nervous system, mm-hmm. or even if it's a freaking penny, and I'm not kidding. Mm-hmm. Like I had, I had these jars that I bought at a yard sale years ago that had a little coin slot in them. Mm-hmm. And when I was first starting my jewelry business, jewelry business, I didn't have a lot of money, but when I got paid in cash or used cash, I would save all the change mm-hmm. and I would put it in the jars. And that was yeah. my travel fund. Cause that's what motivates me to save money is travel. Yeah. 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 Um, 
And so, um, and, and you also need to have like, I mean, I have multiple savings accounts now. Right. I was going to say that that's very helpful for me. You know, I have one of those, um, it's capital one now. I think it used to be a different, um, company that owned it, but it's, they allow you to have, you know, I think up to 10. Yeah. It used to be ING. Exactly. And they allow you to have up to like 10, I think different, and you can name them. And for me, I I mean, I think the point you just brought up about motivation is really important too, right? Because part of what got me motivated to get my money stuff together was like, okay, what is something that I really want? That's not possible in this moment, but I do want to see in my future. You know, even if I don't believe the system is going to be okay, like I want to be able to own a house. So I've got to shift some stuff here in some way. And I think that's so true about the saving, even just a little bit, just putting a little bit towards it each week. You're just like, Oh my God, it it shifts so many different things and helps calm. And really, I agree, like coming back to calming down the nervous system from the money worries is tremendous. And why I wanted you on this show, because women, I think really need to understand that impact on their hormones. Yeah. You know, and you go ahead. Yeah. Two things. One is that, you know, it really is that simple with savings piece Mm -hmm. because if you're, so I have, I have multiple kinds of savings. So if you're self-employed, you need to have a fluctuating income account Mm -hmm. because your income is going to be up and down different times of the year, almost always. Mm -hmm. So you need to have an account where you can pull you, when you have excess, you put it in there and you pull from it. Mm -hmm. And then you need to have a deeper savings. And Mm -hmm. then you need to have like, um, there's, I have like, I I have a credit union. I don't use, I don't use banks at all. Mm -hmm. I use all credit unions. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and it's all about like, um, yeah, the savings is all about, okay, what do I, where, where do I want to put my energy? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What am I creating? Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I was this morning and today when I was on this, this call about the body, this woman was talking about how, when you look down and you're walking, you kind of move your whole body in that direction. Mm-hmm. And it jacks up your whole system. And I don't mm-hmm. know the kind of to talk about, but this is what the bottom line. Mm-hmm. And so, and I was like, wow, with money, it's the same thing. Mm-hmm. If you focus on what you don't have, yeah. if you focus on like what the, the tragedy that's going to happen in the financial industry, right? focus on like these things, then that's, that's what your trajectory is like face down, you yeah. know? Yep. So like that savings and like looking forward to something and even, you know, giving, giving yeah. money too. Oh a, yeah, absolutely. A great currency flow valve, you know, mm-hmm. and there's so many causes right now that need so much. Absolutely. Even if you can do a dollar, even if you can do $5. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah it's like you're just giving a little bit is it just creates that unconscious, whatever, and the energy flow to what you want to support. Mm-hmm. And when you were talking about money, I realized that I want to say one thing too, about if you're a, a woman in a partnership, mm-hmm and your partner deals with all the money, but you don't, then you need to get in there. Mm-hmm. Oh, like, so good. You yep. Need to get in there yep. and know what's happening. And you need it from two perspectives. One, so you're co-creating with your partner, what's happening mm-hmm. financially. Mm-hmm. Huge. Mm-hmm. Two. So, you know, um, and then the other one is like, if that person died, how screwed would you be? Right. Cause you wouldn't know where anything is at or how to get to it. Yeah. Passwords, you wouldn't know anything. And mm-hmm. it's not a good time to be stressed out when that mm-hmm. happens. Mm-hmm. Even if it's not even death, if it's yeah. just you're hospitalized or something. Right. Right. Yep. So, so like those kinds of things, like really, I mean, there's a book called Prince Charming Isn't Coming. That's kind mm-hmm. of about that. About a woman who was like, she was from some huge like family, with tons of money, married into more money. And she never thought about money. She just spent it. And then one day she went to her ATM and it was, she couldn't get any money. Ooh. Yeah. And so she became this person who was like, okay, getting empowered about it. And mm-hmm. able to do it. I can't remember her name, unfortunately, but, but that's huge. Yeah. You know, really I, yeah. I just have a quick story about a friend and this is, you know, a little um, a different than maybe than what you're saying to a certain extent, but I'm not saying every woman should have their own accounts necessarily, you know, co-creating is great, but this friend had some serious issues in her marriage and she finally came to the place where she was like, I'm going to take my money and get my own account and literally just doing that basically took care of all the issues in their marriage. So now they, they just 
they have separate money and it really she didn't even realize that the issues were ultimately about that you know and the stress that that caused because there's power there Mm -hmm, absolutely power there there's family dynamics there from the past there Mm -hmm. there's oh yeah there's control yeah there's so and and there's a lot of money management stuff for couples i can talk about too but just the bottom line is that you can also have a joint account Mm mm-hmm where you both put in a percentage of your income mm-hmm, or what mm-hmm. you both put in 50%, you both, that's ideal, you know, yeah, yeah. So for house expenses, depending right. on how you are. or you both put in whatever percentage you can. And so it's still equal because it's not yeah. like you have to put in 5,000, but you make, you know, 6,000, they have to put in 5,000, they make 10,000 or like whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. Like there's ways to manage your coupleness. Um, but also having your own account. Mm-hmm. Like, so like you have a couple account for shared expenses and you define clearly what those are. Mm-hmm. And if it's over a certain amount, you talk about it first, mm-hmm. you have agreements and boundaries. Mm-hmm. And then if it's, um, if it's actually about the, if, 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 then everything else that you have is yeah. your money. Is yours and you can spend yeah. it in the way you want to without having and any kind of they, guilt. Like, or, whatever yeah. you want, exactly. Yep, yep. So true. And, and I think, you know, sometimes this happens with clients that come to me and I've, I've heard this in other situations where, you know, women will be like, they want to work with me, but they're like, oh, I need to check with my partner. You know, I don't think my partner is going to be okay with me spending this kind of money, da, da, da. And while I get that, you know, it, it, it you are giving that power, especially over your health, which is vital and no one understands your need for, you know, deepening your health and really getting back your health more than you do. Yeah. Um, and so having that, I think like just what you said about having your own account in some form or fashion yeah. where you get to spend this, whatever amount of money in any way that you feel is, you know, true for you and that you need is so, so important in, in calming that nervous system too. Yeah. And also the mindset that they have to, they have to ask or they have checking in makes sense depending on their dynamic. Right. Right. But, um, and even talking it through it with that person. Yeah. But like asking Yeah. or, or like, I can never do it because they don't want me to. Exactly. Is a huge red flag in a relationship Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because you can always generate income yourself. Mm-hmm. So it's like asking yourself, how can I do this? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like that's if, if, I, that is so good. Like everybody, course, rewind that and listen yeah. to that. How if, can I do if, this? Yeah. If the resource was there, how would you? Where would you access it? How would you get it? Mm-hmm. And, and you know, how can you get support to create that income? You mm-hmm. know, um, is that is that a basic that you tell people to sit down and do? Like how how can I create this? I mean, is that well, a good place I mean, to start? People always are hesitant, just not always, but sometimes people are hesitant to spend money on coaching mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm, for their business. Mm-hmm. And it's like this, you know, if you're going to spend money on your business, spending it in a way that's going to help you make money and change your relationship with money forever mm-hmm. is an amazing investment because mm-hmm. knowledge is priceless and it doesn't expire yeah absolutely. and it doesn't crash yeah yeah <laughs> absolutely so it's a really powerful investment and th- yeah. same thing with health yep you I know, know, I know. And I mean, it's, it's funny. Cause I'm just sitting here. I'm like, yeah, but I mean the money coaching, there's so many different things out there for people to choose from now. I get it, you know? And like, I've always been one of those people that I'm like, I can figure it out myself. I'll do the research. I'll read the books. But the reality of working with someone, whether it's on money, whether it's on health, um, you know, whether it's it, it, these things that we really can't see the forest for the trees ourselves, yep. you know? Yeah, that's, that's how I ended up suffering so much of my health before mm-hmm. I hired you. Because mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I'm going to do yeah. this. And I, and I this did thing and that thing. thing. And I got this misdiagnosis and this misdiagnosis mm-hmm. and this misdiagnosis mm-hmm. and that, all these things. And then I still wasn't getting better, even though I thought it was this. And it's mm-hmm. like, okay, well, this makes sense, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and worst case scenario, I get healthier and I'm, you know, whatever. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah exactly. And so it's like, it really is because, because right, okay, this is, this is huge. Mm-hmm. When you make a money decision, mm-hmm. when you make any decision, really, mm-hmm. this is a Carolyn Mace concept. Mm-hmm. Um, when you make a decision from fear, you're creating more fear. Mm, yes. Yep. When you make a decision from whatever intention you have of love, of healing, of empowerment, 
of growth mm -hmm. of whatever when you make a decision from that place mm -hmm. you're freaking creating it mm -hmm. because you know i had a guy who signed up for my uh my money my money program next month mm -hmm. and he, he, he emailed me later and he was or texted me and he was like i'm i had a sale 10 times that amount right after i signed mm -hmm. up i love like, that yeah yeah, of course you did. I yeah, I can't guarantee those kind of results. Of course, of course. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, like, but it happens. He chose to spend these. You know, it's like it's gonna be, you know, twelve to twenty four hours of your time over a six week period yeah. with money and yeah. with other people healing money, talking right, to them. right, so, putting you know, that energy there. Most mm -hmm. people have never even thought about that concept, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they may have done business trainings, they may have done this and that, but they haven't like spent, because you can do business trainings all you want through the wazoo, yeah. if you don't have the mindset of money to receive money and your value and owning all that, it doesn't matter. It's not going to change anything. Just yeah. Emotion. yeah, yeah. And so it, it's huge to say yes to your money relationship, you know, yeah. Yeah. say, okay, I'm willing to spend time with money, I'm willing to um, look at money in the eyes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> not just kind of pee. Yeah. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. And I'm willing to connect with money to plan my future. Yeah. Because when I, I use money as a planning, as a manifesting tool, mm -hmm. okay, what's my next level of income going to be? Mm -hmm. What am I going to do with that money? Mm -hmm. Right. There's the motivation there. Mm -hmm. well, I, I'm going to donate to this cause. I'm going to mm -hmm. give it this much money to this cause. And I make that much money. Yeah by God, <laughs> it's like, you know, or I'm going to take this trip, you know? Yeah. And, and then, and then if your work is aligned with your soul and you feel completely like you're giving a positive impact in the world, all that's happening is more people are being positively influenced yeah. and you're making more money. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I just kind of had this thought that's um, on the flip side of that, if you are an entrepreneur and, you know, we, we started about talking about this and, and how stressful that can be, but if you are able to really start choosing, like for me, you know, when I was able to get to the point where I was like, okay, I'm going to only, I'm not going to go with every person that comes my way. I'm going to choose my clients based on these different things. Then you're constantly, you're choosing that, um, you know, that growth, putting out that love. Cause you're like, this is in my case, I'm like, this is a person that I'm really, really excited to yeah. help get to yeah. a new place versus like, Oh, I have to take on this client because I need the money, you know, and yeah. it shifts everything to be Absolutely. able to get to that place. So it's all around. You're putting this energy into the positive and the growth. Of and prosperity. That's yeah. prosperity thinking. Yeah. Because prosperity isn't excess. Abundance is excess, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And our culture has a problem with excess in a way. So mm -hmm. I, I love the word prosperity because it's like, you know, always I have enough. Mm -hmm. I have what I need. Mm -hmm. And if I don't have it, I ask for it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I think about like anybody listening to this who has the hormone or the digestive stuff mm -hmm. or, this, you know, whatever health stuff is going on for you. There's a quote by Marcus Aurelius that says, what stands in the way becomes the way. Mm, mm. Whatever, whatever, like for me, my, my pain stuff mm -hmm. has, and dealing with that mm -hmm. has changed my business and the way I see life and my, my receptivity mm -hmm. to a whole new level. Yeah. I thought that investing so much money and mm -hmm. so much time, mm -hmm. so many resources basically into my health. Mm -hmm. Cause the thing that was in the way, cause yeah, I was yeah. exhausted. I was depressed. I was like, you know, I had limited, I couldn't exercise a lot. Like mm -hmm. I was so limited with what I could do and how I could show up. I was emotional wreck. Mm -hmm. Like all those things were in my way. Yep. And, and me going into that, facing mm -hmm. it all the way, like I did with money before mm -hmm. helped me create the next level of where I'm at. Yes. Ugh, I love that. And that's what, I am always excited to see that working on your health and, you know, working on your hormones, even when it's really, really hard and you hit these walls, that is really what's going to change all the other things that you're wanting in your life, you know? And, and even like thinking about going back to that, that stress factor, the fact that I get to choose my clients now that I know that it's going to be a good, you know, working relationship that 
brings down the stress in my work, right? You know, you're a whole lot more stressed when you have to work with a bunch of people that you aren't, you know, working well with. And yeah. so there's, it's a lot of its boundaries, right? And I know we could go on forever about that and, and we're, we're running low on time, yeah. but really getting clarity with your boundaries is just so, so important. Um, so, oh my God. Yeah. I could ask you so many more questions, but tell us a little bit about the, um, the workshop that you have coming up. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I have some, a few workshops coming up that are mm -hmm. going to be free. And then I have a program coming up. It's my money mastery intensive program. So good Big program, mm -hmm. super affordable, super fun, mm -hmm. amazing group of holistic and creative people. And uh, when does that start? It starts November 10th. Okay. Awesome. And, um, I also, if you want to get updates on that and other workshops, then you can sign up for my email list. And when you do that, you'll also get the money makeover kit. Ooh. It has three components to it, including a money um, manifesto, cool. affirmations, and a little workshop that's during half an hour. Oh, nice. Yeah. So what's your website? Oh, jenaleycoaching.com, J-E-N-A-L-Y coaching.com. Great. So we'll have that in the notes if people are driving and listening to this and they want to go back to it later and all the other fun places that you're on social media, right? People can follow you. And I'm sure you put great tips on there too about, about money. And I love, love, love this. I, you know, I think that we should talk more in the future about this stuff because I think it's just so, so important for everyone. Um, so excited that you're doing some programs here coming up. That everybody can get in on. All right. Well, thank you for being here with us today. My pleasure. Yes. You. Okay. You guys, I will see you next time.